WWDC is in full gear. Adrian Kingsley Hughes uh, was the net here to talk with me about this uh, after day one. So, Adrian, what do you think was um, the highlight of the keynote address that we heard? The highlight undoubtedly was Apple Silicon, <laughs> and and not because not because in many ways of where Apple is going to take that. We'll come to that in a minute. But essentially, it's a culmination of a decade of work that Apple has done doing its own silicon for iPhone and iPads. And to realize that over that time, we now have processes in phones that are powerful enough to run the desktop experience. That's quite an amazing achievement for a company that started out making, especially as far as consumers are concerned, things like iPods. Mm -hmm. This is a big move. This is a huge achievement for a company to be able to do this. So making its own processes is an amazing achievement. And the fact that we're, it's putting them into Max and that's going to take Max forward is quite an achievement. The other thing that I found quite interesting was this idea that we're not seeing the Mac go off on its own. We're seeing essentially the Mac becoming an accessory to people who have an iPhone or iPad. And I think that that's a very interesting move. When the iPhone first came out, when the iPad first came out, when the Apple Watch came out, many people in the established tech industry saw these as accessories for the desktop and laptop experience. Consumers don't see it that way. For a lot of consumers, the iPhone, the Apple Watch, the iPad are the way they've got into the ecosystem. And so the Mac now, the laptop and desktop experience, are essentially an accessory to these devices. And this is where Apple's going with it. Yeah, very interesting. And, and you actually touched on the uh, Apple Silicon here, but you know, what, what expand on that? What do we know about it? Well, in, in Apple's drive to make the iPhone faster and its drive to make the iPad faster, in a decade, it's essentially improved the performance of, it, of the processor a hundredfold and the graphics performance about a thousandfold. And yesterday, it essentially demoed uh, an iPad Pro chip running an entire desktop experience, running things like Photoshop and Lightroom, just like a very high-end Intel chip. And, and that's a massive achievement. It partly goes to show that maybe Intel's been sitting on its laurels for too many years and not pushing that experience forward. Also, Apple's very keen to say that the Performance and power are also part of the issue here, that people want a, a desktop experience, but without the desktop power requirements. So you're getting a, a laptop experience in terms of power consumption with a desktop experience in terms of performance. That's a huge, huge win for Apple there. And I think it's going to push the Mac in a direction that it hasn't gone in for a while. And that's as a device aimed at people who have iPhones and iPads. Yeah, yeah, very interesting. Um, and you know, what's, what's always uh, you know, interesting here is what, what, what they do tell us, but also what they don't tell us. What'd you pick up mm. on there? Yeah, there was quite a bit of that actually. Yeah. Um, they, they showed some demos of iOS games running. Uh, I think it was Monument Valley 2. That game's been around for a long time. So it's not necessarily a very new game. Uh, the desktop game they showed, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, that's a 2018 game. So again, not cutting edge stuff that they're running on there. So maybe some performance issues. As is normal with Apple, there were no benchmarks, no battery performance data, no nothing along those lines. So we didn't really get to see anything other than, wow, hey, look, it looks good. Um, I noticed during the keynote speech, actually, that down in the bottom corner, they had um, parallels running with Windows in there. But that wasn't mentioned until the State of the Union address that was in the next uh, video that wasn't part of the keynote. So there's a lot of stuff going on here that we don't actually ever get. Apple is never clear. And we're only ever really going to find out how this stuff works when we get hands on with it. So as is always the case with Apple, hey, it always looks good. But you have to spend your money to actually see just how good it is. Right. All part of the mystery with Apple sometimes, uh, Adrian. Well, you know, how, how does Apple or can they really break free uh, from Intel? I think on the kind of on the basic desktop and laptop experience, I think they've shown quite clearly that, a, that an iPad Pro processor 
is powerful enough to offer certainly a very base experience. We don't know what it's actually like hands on and what all the overheads are like. It made a big deal of the Rosetta 2 translation engine. Um, but those of us who are around who remember the first incarnation of Rosetta know that it wasn't exactly as smooth an experience as Apple initially made it out to be. So again, there's a lot of things that we don't know about there. But the real concern with Intel is the high-end stuff, the iMac Pro and the uh, Mac Pro. These are powered by Intel Xeon processors, an entirely different beast to a desktop processor. And it's going to be interesting to see whether these will shift over to, to Apple's own silicon at some point, or whether Apple is going to retain these because that's the best it's going to be able to offer. That said, Tim Cook did say this is a two-year plan. Two years is a long time when it comes to silicon. And essentially, if you think that two-year plan is a three-year plan in terms of actually when hardware might drop, we could actually be seeing Mac Pro and iMac Pro hardware running essentially the same processes that we've seen in iPads. And that's an amazing achievement. Yeah, no doubt about that. Uh, all right, well, wrapping up here, Adrian, what was your overall feeling? You know, having to, Apple obviously having to really shift gears here and how they were going to handle this and, and, and doing this virtually. What was your overall impression thus far? It's a, it was an amazingly smooth experience. It was well put together. It was fun to watch, which I think a lot of keynotes have not been in the past. There was a lot of energy in the in the in in, in it, and, and Apple clearly had edited it to the point that there was a lot of dense dense stuff, even in the keynote. There was very little filler, very little time wasting, no applause, none of that stuff, none of no time spent on Tim Cook telling us how many new stores had opened because you know it would just be stores closing at the moment. Um, so it was a huge, really very specific event aimed at developers, and that was quite refreshing. It's also great that everybody can have access to all this stuff. You know, the, the, not just the keynote, but the State of the Union and all the other stuff that Apple's going to be doing at WWDC. So I think the whole vibe is going to be different. I'm seeing a lot more social media chatter about it beyond people who normally just watch the keynote. I'm seeing more developers being interested in it. So it's very interesting. It's almost like consumers are bored of it, but developers have a renewed interest in what Apple has to say at WWDC. So I think, yeah, Apple has changed how conferences work. Yeah, most definitely, uh, you know, setting the tone for others that will certainly follow. Well, uh, it's some really great stuff here, Adrian. I know you've, uh, you know, put together more for us here on ZDNet that people can check out there and we'll continue to update uh, as the week, uh, as we progress through the week here for WWDC. Uh, we thank you all so much for watching here today. Again, make sure you check out ZDNet. Thank you.